Hey guys, um, through the years I've had students time and time again ask me to explain modes to them. And when I think back to when I first learned modes in the 70s when I was at Berklee School of Music, I remember it being a little bit weird because it's a little bit, you know, like playing multi-level chess, I guess, you know. It's a little screwy and I think I probably had to have it explained four or five times to me before I think I got it. Well. Um, so I'll say a couple things. One thing is I remember when I was a student um, being kind of embarrassed. Uh, I remember the teacher at Berkeley asking me if I knew the notes in a C-sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord. And I just kind of froze like a deer in the headlight. And a little girl next to me said, C-sharp, EGB. She just knew the chord structure. He went around the room. Everybody seemed to know everything more than I did. So out of embarrassment um, and just out of survival, I went back to my dormitory room and I just memorized I memorized the circle of fifths and all the key signatures. I just knew I needed to know at least that much. And that totally made it possible for me to understand the rest of the theory. Now, I try to look at things as simple as possible. So when I explain this to you here, this is just one, um, one explanation that I found kind of worked with some of my guitar students through the years. Um, so look, guitar is a weird tuned instrument. It's tuned in fourths. So unlike a piano, when you play a C chord on a piano, the voicings look exactly the same everywhere. On guitar, you have some that look like this, some look like this, some are up here, some up here. And the reason is because there's such a tuning in fourth. So it's kind of difficult to actually see the structure of the scale, I believe. So I worked at this little deal, basically, <laughs> looking at a scale on one string, and we might as well start with C because there's no sharps or flats. On the A string, I'll do my best job of tapping here. But this is a major scale. This is what makes a major scale. It's not the fact that there's sharps or flats, it's that it conforms to this pattern right here pretty much. I tried to draw it here so you can see the one, the whole step, the whole step, the half step. This is what makes a major scale. I can move it around to wherever I want to, and that might explain to you why there's sharps and there's some flats. Um, but look at this graph right here. You can see the whole steps. You can see why the major chord is a major chord, because of that major third. You, to get a chord out of any scale, you have to extract the, the one, three, five, and the major seven, or the seventh degree of the scale, if you want that much DNA information. But basically, you get a scale, you take out the one, three, five. And that goes for minor scales, dominant seven scales, anything. That's how you determine the quality of the chord. Now in this case, let's go back to C again. And you can see on that graph, the whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. You can see a couple of C examples I've given you there. Now look at the next pattern. The next pattern is basically doing this. We're taking the C scale and we're just moving it up. Right? We're just taking the whole template, because remember, this is the major scale. So if we move it up here, all of a sudden you've got D, E, and F sharp. How did that get in there? Well, it has to, it has to comply to the template. It has to match the template. The fourth, the fifth, and then you have a C sharp. Oops, over there, C sharp and D again, because it has to conform to this. That's the same thing if I start in any of these other given scales here. If I start on B flat, you'll have two flats. You start in G, you'll have one sharp. F, one flat, and it goes on and on. Now, um, here's the way modes work. If we stay in one key, it's a C. And if I start anywhere with that template, it's going to be another major scale. But what if I did this? What if I start with the C major scale? And instead of going up and playing a D major scale, starting using our template, what if I just left those notes all the same and just started in a different place? Oh, wow. It's kind of like if my name is Alan and I put the A on the end of my name, it would be Lena. It's the same group of notes or same letters. It just sounds different when you start in a different place. Okay, so now let's look at the C scale. And as you can see on the, uh, this graph, I have the C kind of whited out there. 
now our new root is on the D and we have a new third because everything we're sticking with the same template we're not moving the template around we're staying in the same place we're just starting in a different place then you can see there's a whole step and a half step which makes what it makes it a minor chord because we extract to get any once again any formula to get a chord out of a scale you take the one three five and seven so there you go the second mode of C major is D minor this process can continue I can go up I can either go I could go up to E and start an E that, that would be a major scale right if I leave it on C and I start on the third note of C what do I have I have an E chord E scale of some sort there's a half step which is not in the chord and then it's third which is in the chord so it's a minor third again the difference being between these two modes is that this one is a whole step half step this one's a half step whole step which makes a big difference uh, when you're actually playing scales but anyway we'll get into that a little bit later but basically if you this process continues through every major key the process is starting on the next note up pulling out from that point of reference, one, three, five, seven, and you get little families of major tonality. So every major chord has a two chord, and the two chord is always minor. The three chord is always minor. This all continues all the way up the spectrum, all these different chords. Now, is it important to know every mode from every root, everywhere on the fretboard? That seems like a pretty daunting task. No, and I'll explain that in the next video. Um, explaining modes and how to use them. But until then, happy modal playing.